But what are we doing today? Uh, what yeah, are we doing today? today? What is this that you are, put upon our good title? We are doing. App. We are talking about. I'm gonna edit that out. The YG Tut. You feel Who is me? YG Tut? YG Tut is a young man from t- Chattanooga. Okay. Chattanooga is in Tennessee. Yes, it is. Yay! Yeah, yeah. That's where uh, Vayner Media has its one of his offices. Chattanooga is University of Chattanooga is also where Terrell Owens went to uh, college. Okay, okay, okay. You okay. feel me? <clears throat> or the only something he went to a, a university that is referred to as Chattanooga. Mm-hmm. It's in Chattanooga as well. But uh, young man goes by the name. Well, you I, he. I don't know if it's always been YG Tut, but I was when I found out about him, it was just Tut. But now it's YG Tut. Um, this project is five years old. This ain't new, but it's fire. It's, it's fire. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I've listened to it before already. So five years old, I'm okay. letting you uh, kind of take the chip lead on this one. All right. Just all like right, I right. did with uh, Reasonable. No, do we do? Illmatic. We Illmatic. Didn't do we didn't do Reasonable Doubt. I have the Illmatic. But uh, yeah. This is a uh, cuz got bars. He got like those real life bars. He kind of raps a little bit. He kind of reminds me of, like a dark skinned chubby J. Cole in a sense. But like sounds That's... like he's a little bit congested. <laughs> okay. You feel me? Like the way he raps, it's like he's be talking about heavy stuff, but he don't use the mad intricate words. Got my appointment in there. You uh, so he's a, he's a poet, not a scholar. He's a poet, not a scholar. All right. But uh, Homie is Cold, we got 17 tracks, hour, well, 59 minutes, 27 seconds. Like I said, this was May 2015. This was five years ago. But cold nonetheless. <clears throat> so, let's get into it. First track, intro. Okay, ten seconds of intro. Was that? It was like Deontay new, Wilder. It sounded like it. Now that you said that, that did low key sound like Deontay Wilder. That's funny, but he's from Alabama. Who? Deontay Wilder. Like what he's from do down anything? south. Yeah, they were talking about Chattanooga. I mean, but so that means he would have known about him on, on on the circuits before you know we did up here. True, but what I'm saying, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm. It sounded like a, like a news reporter was going around Chattanooga, like just talking oh, to people, yeah, like, oh. "Hey, how do you feel about Chattanooga?" You know, I'm partial to piano, so you can, you can go ahead. Yeah, the piano is lovely. Cut that next ten on. Yeah, solid intro. You feel me? That that was actually. I see it, only twenty seconds. Which I feel like this has been one of the more, like, one of the intros that is an intro that, like, it's, like, stuff going on. Like, I'm going to say, like, the Coder Room Friend one, it was just, like, sound for 10 seconds. And then it was, like. This one has mad layers and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's layers. Like, it's, like, it's giving you stuff to go off of. But, yeah. What you feeling? I give it a green. Ah, the first green intro. Yeah, piano, oh. like you said, pianos and layers and stuff. Pianos, layers. You I feel me? It. It's other people's voices. He hasn't said nothing. It's just recordings of actual people talking. That's dope. Yay! Oh, yay! That's, that's not blue chips right now. Yeah, so I'll put it back. I ah. messed them up. It's all good. Ah. Ah. But yeah, uh, we go. oh wait, we didn't do a breakdown. They've been here. Yeah. Good. All right. Eh, bad McDonald's. <laughs> simple. That's it. Simple, simple as so, that. So that intro, I gave it. I, I gave that that first, you know, twenty seconds of green chip. I like the piano. I like the layers. Um, I, I, it makes me wonder how he's gonna come in. I just hope that like it fits and it's quality. So, you didn't say what the track was. But anyways, it's track two, Fall of Goliath. Oh, 
Sorry. Um, all good. It's um, only 220, 228, 223, whatever. 223. Um, the, so is this, is, this, is this why you said it sounds like J. Cole? Not, yeah. Okay. Not that specifically, just like the way he raps. Oh, because like you know his, this is the, um. I know. Okay. Yeah, I know. That is definitely. It's um, the same sample as. Um, same exact sample. And I think which, the song um, was like a similar name, like Fall of Goliath. <laughs> Which um, mm-hmm. I got, you remember the name of it? Mm-hmm. All right, it was on Born Center, right? No, what, what is, is the most recent one? It's on his most recent one. Cause I didn't listen to no, 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 I don't really. Yeah, I don't I, listen to that much J Cole. So I was about to say I didn't really. Become it's on a, KOD. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't window pane. Um, cause I recently just became a, I became a real J Cole fan after I went to his concert. Like when I seen him live perform, mm-hmm. it was different. Was what? It just hit different. Yeah. That's not it. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's a, um, I sample's dope. Uh, sample is dope. That was the first ten. Yeah. So we can go another ten. You might be right. It could also have been on Forest Hills Drive. I don't remember, but whatever. Forest it's, Hills Drive sounds a little bit more accurate. Um, I like it. I I'm hoping it comes in with like that good Dilla kick, like you know the Dilla kick that, you know how when you got big speakers plugged in and you and you touch the plug, mm-hmm. and so it's like, boom. yeah, but like it sounds like it, it's sucking all the sound out of the room. Dilla. That's the kind of kick that that needs a, that needs a straight Dilla kick. That's a, that's all I can say on that one. But um. I mean, I wish it came in, but I love the sample. I came in. That's it's a beautiful sample. Beautiful yeah. sample. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna do this I'm because start. I want you to hear this song when you in the car, like the full song. I'm gonna just hit that for you right now because I want you to hear how it comes. I'm gonna argue, huh? I won't argue. Okay. Um, I just want you to hear how it comes in because I agree. It does need a kick to come in, but you will be surprised how it comes in. <sighs> Track three. Corner stories. Oh, that's, I like that. I like that play on words. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Bye, bye, bye. That was mad Lonnie Liston Smith. Like, that just sounded real. Yeah. Like, warbly, like, synth love. Feel me? Next 10? Remember next 10? Mm-hmm. Oh, you got something to say. No, go ahead. Next 10, folks. Bow. Was that him? That was him. That was him indeed. Did you... Like... He don't sound exactly like J. Cole. I'm talking no, about no, it's not, it. no, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to like his voice or not. <laughs> I told you he sounds he sound kind of like... It's cool. It's, some, like, um, it's more blue for me. It was dope, but like, uh, I want to hear something. I feel you. No, I feel you. I mean, yeah, the corner stories. Is, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, dope. a, good, it's it's a, a good play on words. It's kind of like Busy Boys. Feel me? It's a dope play on words. I don't know why their sight's down. It's kind of annoying, but... It's probably doing maintenance. Their gear was tight. No, nah, I, I don't know what they did. They took all the posts down. Oh, they might be able to revamp it and say, do we want to delete everything and then revamp? I hope so. But here we go. Track four, Prophecies. Three minutes, 43 seconds, no sample, no feature. Oh, yeah. Um, there are no features on here. Not a feature. Not one feature at all. Respect. Yeah. Is that Kenny G? Shoot, that'd be fire if he was. Oh, that was a book that hit my arm and fell into a crate. It actually put itself up. Dope. But that, if it was Kenny G, I would have a whole nother level of respect for this man. Get you a Kenny get Kenny G on your jump five years? I mean, that would be, be a sample. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah, true. But mm. um, It definitely is very musical. Very musical. Next 10? Mm-hmm. Next 10.
that came in kind of smooth. It sounds like crit with more funk and less, I don't want to say less soul, but less soul. And less accent. I mean, I haven't heard him rap yet, but. Oh, true. I mean, I, I, um, I like. I like accent. Chris Big Big. I like Chris Big. <laughs> I like Big Chris accent. Whoa, that was almost a pause. I like Big Chris accent because I like all Southern accents. But yeah, like, what's the uh, what's got, the joint? Um, got that dang. bounce to him. You feel me? My man got that bounce. Was it? Oh yeah. When I have you heard Pull Up? Him and a uh, Big Cent. Five in the morning, why they yo they can't turn my beat up? On the way to a bopper with a crib where I can keep my feet up. <laughs> keep my feet up. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. mountain, you know? uh, what, the the, the was shot and freshly pine the first time I seen it. And then you want to ride high. I forget what the rest is, but it's one of my favorite verses. The funniest thing I ever heard Big Crip, though, my favorite, not the favorite, but the first verse that I listened to Big Crip all the way was One Train, which was ASAP Rocky's Posse Cut off of uh, Live Love ASAP. I don't think I've even heard that. That song. Dope song. Action Bronson, Kendrick Lamar, Joey, like. It was like when it, when that album came out, which I think was like when Ace like ASAP dropped the first album. It was like everybody, all the guys that were like up and coming lyricists in a sense. Yellow Wolf was on it. Danny mm -hmm. Brown was on it. Big Crit finished it off, which is cold. Action Bronson had a verse on there that actually was hard. It wasn't like just hilarious. Like he, yeah. he actually has some bars. Like I said, Kendrick, ASAP had a verse. ASAP started off. Joey Badass's verse was actually good. Mm. Um, like everybody was on that junk, like spit. It was, it was a dope like, song, it was like uh, Mount Olympus, basically. In a way, like OG Mount Olympus. In a way, in a way, yeah. but it was more so like, how can I? I can't even describe it. It's like sad but hard. Hmm. Like it's like it has one, like it has like violins leading it. So like you know, violins an emotional instrument. So it gives you like that. Like it just starts off with like a swell, and then it just kind of comes in hmm. with a beat. But it's hard. It's hard nonetheless. But um mm -hmm. back to the air. Wait, did we No, we didn't uh didn't put anything down for prophecy. How you feeling about prophecy? Mm -hmm. I give it that green. Like I said, it's um you know, Crit is is one legend. of my favorites. He's I think legend. sometimes he does some weird choices, but whatever, makes some weird choices. But he's definitely one of my favorites and I like like I said, the that drum pattern came in, it gave it like some extra funk, but it wasn't um it was one of like ones. not that being soulful is bad, but like it was like more funky and less soulful than, than it's hard to explain. But that's the best way I can describe it. I feel you. Sometimes so, like soulful is like it, it feels like you force it a little bit. Yeah. yeah I feel you. Here we go. So that was prophecy. That was track four prophecies. Track five, living on the sun. You feel me? I'd love to be living on the sun if I could stand it. Vaporize. I said if I could stand it. Okay. Fair enough. I'm interested. Interesting indeed. Sounds like you kind of put like a filter. Oh, it's definitely a filter on, on it. Chords. Definitely a filter mm -hmm. on it. And some like heavy reverb. You got auto tune on this? Mm -mm. It's like the second or third song he started this way though. I know. He, he don't. Do, he don't do auto tune. He does like the little singing sometimes, yeah. but he don't do the auto tune. No, auto -tune. Like it's just natural voice. Um, I never went to Harvard. I like it. I give it a blue. I just um, hey, I want to hear him coming earlier on. I mean, obviously it's a limit of doing twenty seconds, but um, the other thing is, you know, the song started the exact same way. It was kind of a like color friend type thing. Where yeah, you know when it's gonna come in, like around that twenty twenty. Which I guess is like, you know, it could be cool in a certain context, and you, so you just know what's coming. But I also feel like if you listen to a song enough times, then you already know when it's coming in. Yeah. But this is like I don't know. Sometimes even if it's your first time hearing a song, you can just tell by the setup. Right. Exactly. Because that's just what it was going on. Like this was the time. Granted, like, <laughs> like this is 2015. Yeah. This is definitely everybody had their little lead in, and then it was I'm gonna come in smooth, and then we gonna drop that motherfucker. But uh, here we go. 
Living on the Sun. You said blue. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with the blue on that one. You feel me? We gonna go with the blue on that one. It was definitely a forceful strike. That one. I'm not gonna argue that. I probably wasn't in the boring center because I ain't even really listen to boring center. It's but too old. Track six, live from Chattanooga. Live from Chattanooga. I feel like I have a good sense of where this is going to go Like once the beat drops. I love the fact that um, he has the pianos and the jazz bass in there. I used to do it all the time, but it's like it's clearly a sample, so it has a more authentic feel than you know computerized bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, I also feel like this is like a Chad Butler record. Not a Pimp C record, a Chad Butler record. Like I don't know, I don't know what the drums, what the drums are gonna sound like. Maybe they'll drop soon, but like I could, I could definitely feel like some Chad Butler on here and like just kicking some game. I ain't gonna deny that. I ain't gonna argue that. I ain't gonna deny it. I ain't gonna refute it. I like it. Next ten. Next again. I mean, I need the, I need the drums to come in, but like, yeah, I just I all I I wish he didn't start way in the background again. Like I almost, I almost want to give him a blue just, just all the strength of that alone. But like, <laughs> I, you know, cause you know, Pimp C, he was on top of the record. He's like, you gonna hear what I have to say, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not gonna shout. It's all right. Yeah. Sure. And so I'm just gonna, yeah, having his voice just on top of that with the right bounce. Like I'm excited just thinking about it, you know. That's uh. Live from Chattanooga, track six. Live okay, okay, okay. from the. All right, track seven, static. Holy Water. I wonder, wasn't it? Was it last? Oh, it was a Jeezy record. That um. Nah, that's that's a green. That's a green. green. That's a green. Yeah. That's a green. Like I said, I want to give him a blue because the way he, he keeps, came in the, the exact same way, and I mean, maybe he found his weight. He found his pocket. Not that. It's just <laughs> that he started with that same, you know, super reverb, vocal. Yeah. And I mean, we're on track six. He's done it at least three times. So. Like give me another look, you know. It's like if somebody come down, keep trying to hit you with the tween pull up. Yeah, it's like like you're not gonna tween, tween pull. Tween, yeah. You're not about yeah exactly. Tween, tween, hit me tween, with tween. a hezzy or something. Yeah, just gonna just pluck you after a while. Oh, yeah, but here we go. Track, Sim. Holy water. Holy water. This reminds me of an old Goody Mob record. <laughs> just look, yeah, like, yeah. Like, 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 like Big Gip or something like that. Just saying some real stuff. Yeah, but it's like, I, I'm, this is like, what's, um, you know, that, that thing like the world's biggest, uh, cookout or whatever, or, um, world's biggest kickback or something, they have it in North Carolina. <sighs> All I imagine is like mad people and some just wide open expanse of just grass and like hella red cups and just people just, <laughs> just, just vibing. That's funny. That's funny as hell. Try it. Yeah. Fucking with it. Does it sound like, you know, once you like once you hit the block or whatever, you got your chips up, now you wanna throw a party for the neighborhood and everybody's out there. That's that's what it sounds everybody's like. Everybody's out there and it's like you feeling it, but at the same time you just kinda like I keep getting yeah. the chips up. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you, you can't really enjoy the party because it's like. Now nah, you throwing the party because your chips up. You See. throwing the party because your chips up, but I'm li I'm listening to the lyrics too because it's like, yeah, I had this good party, but I gotta hit another lick because Christmas right around the corner, baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 baby. I can't. Yeah, kids is asking me for things. They see daddy out here throwing parties. I gotta make it do what it do. But yeah, yeah. that's so, a green, so baby. Funny too though, like. When people do that, you know, the question is always like, what are you actually doing for the community, right? But then mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I mean, as, as, you've seen, as you've seen with me trying to work with folks, people don't always, like, 
want help or they don't always want to help themselves. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know when people like when people, whether it be a dope boy or whatever, some rapper they they come out of a neighborhood, a certain community, whatever they make a bunch of money, they come back and throw like you know little parties, whatever, mm -hmm. and then sometimes the criticism that they get is like, oh, what are you what are you doing for the community? And it's like, what I can, some people's gonna respond to, you know, take take some pressure off their shoulders at least for you know a day or a few hours or whatever, because mm -hmm. you know everybody. Everybody doesn't want to put in the work to win. Yeah. Everybody wants to win, but everybody doesn't want to put in the work to win. Some people just want to be on the winning team. Yeah, like I said, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Like, crazy. It sounds like a, a, a prerequisite to me. And, you know, at least kind as it's, as it's conveyed it's to us. It's definitely one of the necessary uh, things. But I also heard, in a, it's funny, in a J. Cole song, um, what was it? The Fall. For all the other com like that's on KOD. Mm -hmm. like, give me joint, give me smoke. That joint. Yeah. On the intro, he's like, I know heaven is a mind state. I've been a couple times. Yeah. So that's that's what I meant. When it just depends on how you how you how you define it, how you describe it. But as as it's been presented to us over, you know, yeah, the last several centuries, you die like, and you yeah. go. Yeah. But I I definitely agree more with yeah. what Cole said than anything state, else because it really. It's just gratitude, for real. You know, people like, oh, I gotta go to work. Nah, fam, you get to go to work. You could, like, not have feet and be begging for money, for snacks, but you're not. You got a whole place to go that's paying you to do a job, you know? Should that be your, should that be your, 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 uh, what's the word? Your final destination? Actually, is that your finish line? Absolutely not. There's so much more to, you know, to be, have, and do in this world, but. Sometimes you just gotta take a moment to sit back and just be like, you know, thank you. Thank right. you. I could be strung out right now. But any number of things. Um but yeah, that's what that made me think of. Did I um Oh. Shout out to the big man. Respect. Yeah. Uh uh. But uh we put on the jump or something. We got it. It was a green. Green green. Let's go track eight. You see what track eight talking about highs and lows. It's funny we were just talking about that. It's about mixing. Yeah, get your frequencies right. Yeah, yeah. This is either gonna be my favorite record or I'm gonna hate it. They better bring in like a bass. Or I'm I'm be, I'm gonna be so mad. Oh, that's gonna turn you up. Where's the um the bass? Where the, where's the bass at? <laughs> it's in there. It's just faint. Yeah, nah, you need like a boom. Because the way, because I, a lot of my favorite beats, even the ones that I make, are the ones that have like a push and pull to them. So like it has like a chord, and then the snare hits and it goes away, and it's silence, and it's like, you know, and it's like, but you gotta have a bass that like really punches it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's cool when you're at the beach and, you know, the waves are like lapping at your waist, but then you gotta catch that one that like, it comes over your shoulders, so you can. Ride that joint to shore. Like I need, the, I need the base to be that gap, that two, three feet from from waist to. That's like two feet from waist to shoulder. It depends on what beach you had though, because if you had a rocky beach, that ride in might be a little rough. I'm, 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 I ain't talking about rocky beach. I'm talking like I need. Yeah. You're saying, but there's some rocky beaches out there that's nice. But I feel you. I definitely the the drum loop that came in was pretty dope. Um, but I'm, they like. Yeah. I mean, listen, he dropped the whole album. So I, I can't be so mad, but that basically put it over. Put it over. But um, uh, how you feeling? <sighs> the Russian judge. There's no bass, white. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used to call yeah, Jordan. Pretty much. That's how they used to do Shaq and Jordan at the uh, dunk contest. He tried more than once. Eight. And it's like, Shaq, he just went through his legs twice. He had to do it more than once. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same way. Even if, like, remember the, um, when Blake Griffin did the two handed 360? Yeah. And, like, everyone was more excited about that miss than every other dunk in the competition. But then, like, he also could never get it, so he did some basic dunk. But, like, if you don't get on the first go, it's just not the Because it's not the same. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because it's, it's, we've seen it now. Yeah. So it's like. So we know what you're trying to do. It's like, now nah, you got to just do it. So then nobody cares about your excuses or your apologies. Like, get it done. I feel it. 
I feel ha- it. Having said I that. feel like after t- <laughs> we had to get that joint away, ain't no bass on there. No apologies either. <laughs> after what? <laughs> I was about to say on basketball. I feel like after the second one, like at, once it gets to like three, four, then it's like. Or you, or you gotta surprise people, right? You gotta be so prepared that like if you blow that first dunk, you got a whole different dunk to do on your second try. That's like just as tight, cause then then you can maintain the ten. Cause like, dang, I missed that one. Let me go ahead and hit him with the other one that I know is a ten. And then like, if you make it to the next round, then try the other one again. That you that you know you know that way like. That's the strategy. In it. Cause then they gonna forget. Like, oh, he smashed that one. And he's like, oh, he did the other one again. You know what I'm saying? It didn't just like, oh crap. Except for oh, that. Oh crap. It, the funny thing is always the one commentator. It's usually Kenny to All be right. like. He did that last round. <laughs> yeah. But but he missed Kenny. Somebody done the first. Yeah, play. but they be like, they don't the even matter, play. Kenny. That was crazy. And it's like, look, I'm just saying. Right. The one New York dude. I'm just saying. I mean, he missed on the first. Round. He did that the first round. I mean, it's dope. <laughs> Show's over. <laughs> there we go. Track nine, Kairos. I went on a trip to Kairos. It was beautiful. Where is that? Kairos is is this thing that they do at private high schools like not all private high schools but like catholic private high schools yeah in like your junior year or your junior year mm. where you go on like a retreat for two days and just reflect like it's like an emotional thing it's like yeah. you go away you got counselors they're talking about like being closer to god and like being able to share your mo everybody tells their traumatic stories about who they are it's actually dope because like you learn a lot of shit about people that you would have never known like yeah. the girl that's always quiet i'm just making some shit up now but like the girl that's always quiet it's like she's killed four niggas and it's like what but it's like she had to like <laughs> you right. feel me it's like some like it's some deep yeah. shit like I mean, motherfuckers be like yeah i lost like eight people in 9 11 it's like they um damn with that my other high school. That was like when I was saying the story about my um my friend that I was like with every day and I went to college. So mm-hmm. I was like I found out about that because um one of my homegirls was in like his group and that was a story that he told. So she told me about it and I was like, damn, I felt bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I felt the entire time. I'm just sitting there with people like I got classmates like, Yeah, my cousin died like two days ago and so I got shot and she just said and one dude got a call like while we're at Cairo's, hey your cousin just got shot. And then, like, that shit was just crazy. I cried. I fucking cried. Like, everybody cried. Like, that was the thing. So what What does Kairos actually mean? Live the fourth. Are you speaking with a lisp? No. Live the fourth. What does that mean? If you can hand me my phone, somebody recently reminded me. Cut. That's ominous. If you can hear that in these headphones, it'll throw you off. <laughs> Mad sounds like somebody just walked in. Well, not walked in, creeped in. Yeah. All right. Oh, perfect. And the and the person remind they reminded me. Uh, hinted takes to me. But uh, live the fourth, live the fourth, live the little little four. Live the fourth, live the fourth. I'll bring it up later because I'm gonna be sitting there scrolling. Basically, it means something along the lines of like live as if like it's like the it's like the live like the fourth day of Kairos in a sense. Okay, now you're just confusing me. I'm about to look it up on Wikipedia now. But I, part of it is that, is because you know that um that was the name of the first album that we started with. Yeah. Kairos is an ancient Greek word meaning the right critical or opportune moment. The ancient Greeks had two words for time, chronos and kairos. The former refers to chronological time, chronological or sequential time, while the latter signifies a proper or opportune time for action. While chronos is quantitative, kairos has a qualitative, permanent nature. Kairos also means me- weather in modern Greek. Interesting. So that's a little little Siri blurb. Okay, so that 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 makes makes sense. Because yeah, because they create an environment for you to like you know dig deep, find yourself. Okay, here we go. Yeah. This is away from distractions, touching into who you are and trying to figure out what it is that keeps you away from God. The fourth refers to trying to live each day as if it were the fourth day of Kairos. Like I said, doing what you need to do in order to feel those feelings you felt during Kairos, but on a more consistent basis. So, yeah, live the fourth is as if it's like, yeah, live like the fourth day of Kairos. Because Kairos was like a four-day trip. 
It was a three. It was a two three day technically because we two nights and then the third day. So what's the fourth day? They're saying li- like live the fourth. Like hey, oh, live oh, as oh, if oh, you're oh. still on Kairos. Mm. Because when you're on Kairos, it's like you're not allowed to bring your phones. You're not allowed to bring any technology. So it's literally just human beings, Yo, and they have to sit there and talk. I'm thinking about getting a dumb phone. Like like a flip joint? Yeah, like a flip joint with the T9. Instru- like, I don't even, bro. Yeah, this is this is, this is is a lot. It's like, it's cool to a point, but then I'm starting to feel used by it. Because like, I find, like, so now I walk around my house, and like, sometimes I, because you know, I don't have like curtains upstairs. So I walk around my house, and I imagine like what it looks like from the outside. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking around my house just like this all the time with my phone in my hand. Mm-hmm. Like, and whatever I'm doing, it's just there. And it's like, all right, I like, so, I gotta stop and half the time it's cause I get like some stupid free game and then I play it and play it and play it and then finally I get tired of it and delete it and then I'm good for like several months until I'm like oh, I just want a free game to play for a little bit and then nope but see, like everything whether it be group chats whatsapp twitter all, it's like for what and even then the emails that I get sometimes it's convenient so I can respond to stuff immediately but like why do people need to have that much access to me cause they don't right so I just give me a dumb phone and like I want no emails I want no games like I, let me get a book. Yeah, no, that's when I walk in the house. That's why I just throw my phone on my bed, unless I'm going to work on music and I got to bring it because I got to sample stuff. And then that be throwing me off because after I sample something, then I'll be like, oh, I bet, oh, Instagram. But like, when I go in the house, like, I watch I, YouTube on it all the time. My phone, get my knowledge up. I do watch YouTube videos on my I phone. I study up, learn about finances and philosophy. I wish I watched productive YouTube videos more often. I'm often watching Kevin Hart's Coldest Balls. <laughs> or I'm watching a live concert of like somebody just going crazy or like somebody's concert. Or I'm watching somebody get their ass beat. <laughs> I mean, well, as like, far as the concerts, you could be studying stagecraft. But No, yeah, no, that's one thing I do. Like, I watch how people, like, when it comes to, when I watch stuff on music, on YouTube, like, I'm studying. Like, if I'm watching a documentary about an artist, because I do watch documentaries about artists, because yeah. I know there's some dope artists that don't have any documentaries, like, on Netflix, or, like, I would have to buy Hulu, or yeah. some shit like that. So, like, I was watching the Basquiat documentary on YouTube. Yeah. I was watching the Cherry Bomb documentary, the, the like, I be watching, like, the making of albums. Stuff like that when it comes to music. Like, I'll be watching this 30-minute video about how they made Yeezus. Or how they made my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Like, stuff like that. Like, what was the process that people put their minds in and stuff. Because I'll, I'll be trying to figure out, like, how to get yourself in a album, yeah. quote-unquote, album mode. Like, I like because people always say, like, oh, like when they be talking about Drake. Oh, don't, don't fuck with Drake when he had album mode. Like, like, like I want to I wanna be able to get that. I think that's the conversation, though, that I was just having with, um, with Young. It's just that, like... I, to me, album mode is like you're starting to work on the album, but album mode doesn't happen until you get to like the fourth or fifth song, and then it clicks for you, and you're back in the groove, right? Because like one of the things that Drake said it was like, it's actually easier to make music before you got famous because you could, you could make sure you write a sixteen every day, but then when you when you blow up, then you have all these other responsibilities that you have to tend to, and people you know want your time, yada yada yada. So you don't actually get much time to work on music. So when you're in album mode, like it, you make a couple songs. And then then you're in the groove. Then it's just like wake up, go to the studio, like order food, whatever. You're just song and song and song and song and song, and to me, like that's album mode, and then eventually you leave that pocket. Even when Nipsey made his um, was making Victory Lap, he finished the album, but because he was like in a good space at that time, they just kept making records, and I like, kept making more and more records. Because once you find that pocket, you want to milk it for what it has because you don't know how often it's going to show up. So yeah. it's the same thing, just like developing like a routine or a process and adhering to it. I think so for for at least the more famous folks, album mode is like right now my primary responsibility and focus is creating music and then you slowly tap into more and more of that creativity and stuff starts flowing out and so you know if somebody does come mess with you then you know you got bars and metaphors for just coming out of the wazoo because you're already in that creative space yeah no i feel it that's, I that's, what, feel that's what that means to me but yeah i, I don't and i actually looked it up online to give me a dumb phone it's like 96 dollars which is like I'm talking about outright like just buy it so, yeah. if you see me coming here with a flip phone one day, you know what's up. Be mad. I'm trying to regain my sanity. The funniest thing that I always see is the video of LeBron James at WWE, like Monday Night Raw, recording Stone Cold Steve Austin off a flip phone. I don't think I've seen that. 
it is hilarious because it's like a meme. It's like, bro, LeBron's been in the league so long. He recorded Stone Cold Steve Austin off a of flip phone. phone. You got to you got to email it to me so I can. And it was funny because yeah, like the camera, like the it's, it's LeBron James. He's a front front row, of course. Yeah. So the camera's like, yo, LeBron James is here, and he turns to the camera. He got the joint flipped, and he got the video. He's just sitting there like. And I'm like, yo, LeBron used to be an unk, but at the same time, he was like 20. Yeah. So I'm like, that's funny. It's something I would be doing. Like, <laughs> it's beautiful with the antenna out and all that. I think the antenna was out. I think I think it was one of them joints that like, it wasn't really an antenna. It was just like a little a butt, you know, the little oh, booty yeah. antenna, the little, <laughs> the like, little nub. The nub when they was trying to get all fancy with it, like yeah. this ain't the full antenna you got to pull out. It's like them joints used to break all the time. Oh yeah, it was like one of them walkie joints, except not as thick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it used to break. It's just snap in half because you forget to put it down. Slant you out, and put the joint down. True, that's a lot. But here True. we are. Here we are. Back to the music. Kairos track, track nine. nine. As we had this whole soliloquy about Kairos. It's a beautiful place. Beautiful time. If you're in high school, if you're in a high school that does it. I would advise going on it. In your high school that doesn't do it, I would talk to the administration about doing it because it's, it's a beautiful thing. I think everybody needs to have a Kairos experience. Maybe not in high school because, like, when you come back. Once every decade. Yeah. Like, because when you come back from Kairos, mm -hmm. all that shit go out the window. All right. Because, one, you come back during the school day to the school. So it's a bunch of worldly living. There's a bunch of people that have been living in the world for the last three days. And they see you, it's like, oh shit, my nigga back. So it'd be like. Like, nah, fam, I'm saved right Yeah, now. you'd be like, hey, like, I'm, I'm sitting there walking the halls, like, hey, what's going on, guys? Like, hey, what's up? they like, yeah, we got Friday night, nigga, we got to get ugly. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> that, and that's why, like, I think that's why people say environment is so important, right? Oh, why you got to be so around. Like, if you want to be. That's successful, you gotta be around successful people because, like the the homeostasis or like the the natural baseline, the natural mo um, of the group you're in is gonna like your group's gonna find center, just like your body tries to find center. So like if you're around folks that just want to be goofy, then the center is gonna be way closer to goofy, if not completely. But if you're like you know, if your circle is like three dudes are getting it and two dudes that are goofy like the goofies are eventually gonna like start getting their shit together and probably stop hanging out with the unless they just aspire to be goofy then they're gonna just go and like be delinquents but you know you gotta so you gotta make sure your, your mix is appropriate at least at least as a balance that you want yourself to reflect as you mature and it's like people don't consciously make that choice and they should because I feel like it gets it's weird important. with people too because they feel like you think you're better than me? Mm, not even that. Like, people feel like just because people are doing good things, like in their life, like that they can see, like, so, oh, such and such got a good job, they got a degree, they trying to go to law school, something like that. They mm. think it's like, oh yeah, like they they still doing good shit. Like we can still hang out, and it's like, nah, you got, like you can't, like not saying you got to completely cut a motherfucker off just because y'all are going and. Y'all aren't trying to do the same thing, mm -hmm. but like, you want to be around people that are trying to do the same thing as you, like, because that centers you even more, it makes the connection even more. Like, if you're trying to be a musician and then like all your friends are trying to be lawyers, it could work out later down down the line where it's like, yo, I need a fucking lawyer, and then y'all got that compatibility. But it's like, that's two different energies. Yeah, well, yes, I think, though, I think I think the overlap, though, the, or the common ground is just more along the lines of, like, like, obviously, you're not going to hang out okay. with your lawyer friends most of the time. Yeah. But the commonality is that, like, you're working really hard to achieve something. No, no, no that's what I'm saying. Like, you still got somebody that is working hard. Yeah. But what they're working hard at, yeah, that, right. true. But, like, to your point, you wouldn't hang out with them all the time. You wouldn't hang out with them all the time because they're doing something different. Because respect. It's, it's, it's respect, and it's two different mentalities when it comes to how work can be done. You think so? With the examples that I just gave, a musician and an accountant, yeah. Because an accountant is... You said more, lawyer, but why? Well, I said lawyer, but I meant to say accountant. But, Same yeah. Difference. Yeah, like, because being a musician is more about, I mean, you're studying, 
you're practicing your music every day, doing mm -hmm. studying, you're trying to be out so you can get your shit heard, whether that's going to clubs, whether that's putting music out, like then you're trying to lotion. Nothing by no one. But um going uh <laughs> um, like like when you have a like a, a, a like when you're trying to do something like that like structured like that I feel like a musician wouldn't be able to be around that all the time so like I could be off and I could just be going so, off of like biases but so let's say okay so let's say we are we talk about archetypes you know what archetype is I've heard the word multiple All right, times. So basically like a the the principal type of person we're describing, like at, at core, right? So you're mm -hmm. talking about like an artist or, or let's say a creative, because it's a little wider. A creative mm -hmm. and a professional. Okay. So what how does you know the creative having if they're I guess I from my perspective, I feel like even as a creative, in order to reach a high level, you have to have a lot of output, like I was talking to Youngin about, right? And in order to have output, it's it's there's got to be some kind of process. And even like all the greats, it's like yeah, from this time to this time was my writing time. Like don't don't knock on my door, my phone is off. Don't talk to me, I don't care. Like if the house is burning down, you can tell me after the time's up, right? So there's that. So like, how does that necessarily differ from? You know, this person over here, let's say they both have morning routines or whatever, but how's that different from this person here going to their, like, 9 to 5, right? And then further with the being out and trying to be recognized, t to me, that's a parallel to going to conferences, right? Or going to, like, networking events. Because they both require networking events, but, like, going to conferences and maybe, maybe you know, taking the classes and then maybe doing your same studying in your profession as, you know, the, the creator does over here so that way you can then present at the conferences the same way, like, this person wants to perform. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like in in that regard, I guess that that's why those the relationships would be able to stay together because there's a mutual respect in terms of growth and progression because they both like in order to be good at anything, being great at anything requires the same amount of effort. Like I, that's that's something that that I f I firmly believe, and no one has, has as yet been able to convince me otherwise. Ten thousand now. I mean that's mastering, but I feel like mastering is greatness. Right. And so it's it's it's. It's commitment to the craft. So, like, if you want to be, because, like, there's a whole lot of average lawyers and accountants in the world. Like, granted, you know, you got to go through a lot of school, but there's yeah. a whole lot of average accountants and lawyers, right? Oh, yeah. But then, like, just like there's a whole lot of average musicians. The difference is, if you're an average musician, you're poor. Or or you have a day job, and you just do it, like, as a hobby on the side. It's not really that big of a deal. But if you're, like, an average accountant or lawyer, like, you're still paid pretty well. Eh, maybe not an accountant, but eh, whatever. You're, you're paid pretty well. Maybe yeah. not as much now, just because I know that, like, my, um... One of my cousins is a lawyer and was talking about how these folks are basically doing um, like document review where they sit in a room and just read documents all day for like twenty dollars an hour, which is bananas. But what most people imagine um, lawyers to be, mm -hmm. you know, to be an average one, you're still you're still doing pretty well. I feel like as an as an a creative, if you're just an average creative, it's really hard to support yourself. Yeah. And it, so like that's and that's I feel like what I was talking about, like being average in those two avenues is nobody want to be average. No, nobody want to be average. But I'm saying, like, it. Of course, that like it, it would. That's why I feel like it would be impossible. Because if you if you're willing to settle for average, though, no, I, I, no, yes. But I'm saying even for the greatness, it would still be impossible because, like you said, same amount of effort for everything. So as a musician, I can't fuck. I can't hang out. I'm on the street every day. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to get my music out. I'm, I'm in the club every day. Versus as it's like you're trying to be a great lawyer. You're like reading all day. Like, you're reading law. You're right, like you're trying to memorize law and how to twist it and flip it and turn it and all mm -hmm. this stuff all day. And it's like, I feel like if you're like when you're out moving around like being a musician because it's not always moving around everything is technology now so you could just be sitting at a laptop just uploading songs or just yeah. emailing them to people yeah and same thing with being a lawyer you could just be sitting with your ipad like on quizlet just going off of like something that you made quizlet yeah I'm just off the top 
Like, you just be sitting there on your iPad just doing little question, just little question quips from, like, apps and stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. You're not going to be great off of apps, but, you know. But you feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, I guess... I guess what I'm what I'm trying to convey is ultimately it's like it's it's a it's a vibe or a mindset which is which is why because then yes because yes. like yes. when you because yes. exactly. yeah. if you look at the folks that we consider great it's like they're always friends with other great, great people yeah so like you don't never, and no top tier athlete is friends with no bump rapper it don't happen you know what I'm saying and so like and that's and that's like a that's a that's a that's a mindset that's a vibe that's, that's an approach to life and so granted not everybody is is fortunate enough to make it to the upper echelons but like you can see when someone puts in that work like it's obvious you know mm-hmm. and so and it may be you're someone who did succeed being a professional and then you know someone may be putting in that work as a creative and maybe they're just not good they're not good enough you know and then so maybe there's some fall off there but i think ultimately what brings people together is that, is, is together is that vibe or that mindset because even like let's say like i mean they're not really friends anymore but like damon hove you know, too great. Dame, uh, professional, but like he was the business guy, and then Hove was the artist, and then you know they collaborated on business stuff. Just like I'm sure Dame was in the studio, like hey, hey, hey say this, or like let's make a song about such and such. You know, or we need to pick up this artist. So there was some overlap there, but like I think it's it's having um, just the same the same approach to life and having values, having the same values. I think that I think that overrides everything. Yeah, same values, same moral compass. That helps a lot in uh, friendships and business relationships. Yeah, just, just like um on the same page. I think it was last episode I brought up Bradley, and he was like, you know, I got my friends that I spend time with, do business with. I got my associates that like I don't really rock with, and then I got my buddies that like they're great to kick it with, but I would never do business with them. Yeah, it's like so, you know everybody has their their pockets, and oh, I'm I'm trying to figure out if I like. I really have like buddies or if I just stop talking to people it's probably not good I wouldn't know I'm sorry I wouldn't know I got I got some friends I would do business with I have some friends I wouldn't do business with and I got see that's my thing kind of to what we were saying last podcast like I don't hang out with people if I don't if there's not something about if there's something about you that I either admire or I feel like like yo we could do something great yeah. not just like yo I could get something great off you like yeah. we could do something amazing like I don't if I don't if I don't feel that then yeah like I'm I don't really care like <laughs> I have a hard, I have a hard time with people that have like a lot of friends or people they they consider really friends yeah or like me have too. a lot of best friends like, like bro, that those was people are not your best friends that like, that was a big argument for me and my group of friends because everybody I everybody got mad because I was like fam I got I don't think I have any best friends and then these two girls were like I'm supposed to be your best I'm like I mean like <laughs> I might be your best friend yeah, but you're not your mine best friend, but like. <laughs> It's not reciprocated in my eyes. It could be, and I could just be ignoring it because I'm being extra or something, but, like, I don't see it. But we talked about it, and that's my... She's just... No, I, I, yeah, I mean, different strokes. Yeah. Different but, strokes. yeah, I'm, I was up that, like, because it was a period in time where everybody had, like, six best friends, and it was just like... I mean, I ain't never. I might have had two. I got my, my two niggas. <laughs> these my niggas yeah. I talk to them yeah about everybody else and all about life and, yeah and then everybody else if you want to talk to me you gotta come to me I go to them cause they my niggas and I trust them and I know they not gonna tell me no bullshit that's that's how I've kind of been majority of my life like yeah. I'm not reaching out to all the like oh yeah. what do you feel what do you think like I don't even ask you some shit if I honestly want you to answer. Nice person on the list, somebody like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, get off your phone and leave me alone. Yeah, you don't actually care about me. Leave me alone. Facts. Niggas be hitting you up just to, just to to waste your time, just to get unchy. Pick up the phone and listen to me breathe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now we actually gonna play this track. Track nine, Kairos. So we about to start like eight times. We ain't started. Kairos.
three slow I like it. Stretched out guitar strips. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's rock it. The tempo was actually way different than what I imagined. For real? Yeah, like when the um, Hyatt came in the background, that was, that was not the tempo that I was imagining. You thought it was going to be like faster? Um, No, probably slower. Okay. I but I was thinking that. of um this Daniel Caesar and uh Sabrina Claudio. Yeah. Was it no, it's not Daniel Caesar, it's Sir, actually. It's Sorry. called That's Why I Love You. And that's what it reminded me of. I didn't realize um that that was actually the name of the song, because that's not what the chorus is at all. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's music now. Yeah, it just, it just threw me <laughs> because I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's the name of this song. Because it's also not about love at all. Well, it, whatever. You, know, you see, gotta that, listen to this song. It's called nah, That's I Why I Love You. I feel you. By Sir and Sabrina Claudio. It's dope, but like, it's definitely... Um, it's more artistic in naming. Definitely artistic in naming, but it definitely describes really like what a lot of dating is like now. And just how you kind of back your way into relationships in a way. Um, what you mean? I'm gonna have to listen to it. I'll listen to the, it. The he said like basically the main part of the course is like I just smash and leave. Uh yeah, that's <laughs> that's like I don't even like we're not even friends like we're I just you just smash and leave. But then like because and as the song progresses, it's like because they have this um I don't know if it's respect, but they have a mutual we approach both, to the the situation it's like we both like they understand end up following toxicity. they end up falling for each other because like they just let each other rock it's like you just show up boom bang pow i'm out and like that's it but then like over time it's like hey this really works and it's just it was really really interesting and i feel it we both understand our levels of toxicity but at the same time it's like mm. yeah so i mean that and which would be unique because in you know dating and 2020 20. it's like people don't understand there's their no levels dating. of toxicity <clears throat> there's no dating well that too 2020 but man. also people i feel like people that always be trying to point out somebody else's toxic usually be the most toxic people and that's Hell yeah. that's that's just that's so funny because they're like you can't even and then you can't even tell them it's like no it's you you're the one like you could just why like you, slow down and learn how to communicate with words yeah why are you so like, pressed to tell me i'm toxic yeah um, <laughs> you're trying to beat me to the punch mm. <laughs> if i tell you before you tell me you can't say shit. And if you do say shit, then we just go be sitting here looking at each other. That's the eight mile rule. Yeah. And if you do say some shit, we just gonna sit here, look at each other, and act like nothing happened. And then just go back to right, normally scheduled programming tomorrow. Yeah, I've definitely experienced, um, like a, I would say a somewhat sadistic use of that descriptor. Because like, you know, just calling something toxic and then just going out of the person going out of their way to like make it make things really difficult having a conversation really difficult for me because of whatever perceived slight or whatever yeah whatever perceived slight they endured on their end mm -hmm. and despite my being like yo that's really not what that is and like i can tell you where it came from and i'm trying to work through it just like no no no, no. it's like all right Clear <laughs> clearly nothing you said you wanted to wear out actually is what you said it was. so like just leave me alone. I feel it. And that's what happened. And I feel free. I feel I had a similar situation like that, except I just, like, Shawty just, like, just left. Because it was just, I got, like, I got to the point. I'm not an arguer. We can have conversations if we disagree, but I'm not the one that likes to just yell back and forth. Oh, yeah. Y'all like, stupid. I don't see the point in it. I don't yeah. see the point in the yelling and the cursing back and forth. Like, if you're saying something, the curse words are involved, then that's fine. But when you just cussing at people, just yelling, like all this, I don't see the point. Nothing gets solved. You're just trying to hurt each other's feelings. And then, yeah. And there was one girl who was trying to argue with me, like, for no reason. So I'm just, like, like just read, like, just reading the messages listening on the phone just as off the profanity is being thrown at me and I'm just like you done? You got it off? You got it off your chest? Oh that's funny actually All the right. same person one time we were on the phone they were so mad I was like I was like yo you calm don't tell me to calm down I was like yo if you want to have a conversation let's have a, let's have a conversation but like 
I'm not about to do it. It's like, stop, click. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like, but, then, like, I got hung up on. Yeah. And it was like, but you're, like, literally in the middle of screaming your sentence and then, like, hung up on your, I was, it was so yeah, weird. Hung up and they got, like, a note so. the next day and I'm just like, hey, girls are crazy. like, why can't you handle yourself? Girls it's are crazy. Weird. Not all girls are crazy, but, like, <clears throat> Caribbean girls are crazy. I'll, I will stand on that. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'm, uh, I'll leave that one alone. I will stand on that. Hi, Rihanna. I will not mess with the Haitians, but Caribbean girls, they got a little twang to them. Haitians are Caribbean. Technically speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caribbean people are amazing. You're stupid. Leave me alone, Haitians. No. All right, track 10. Oh, we, 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 we ain't even go to next. It is, I, I'm going to go blue. It threw me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't mad at that. Kairos is definitely like, when I heard it the first time I listened to it, I was like, okay. He, this must be like him opening up to the fans. Like, this is what I listen to. <laughs> Which is always dope. Yeah. But sometimes it's not for the, for the artist. Yeah. Track 10, Hanging. It sounds like a... Trying to be like a Pete Rock type beat. Hmm. Okay. Um. It definitely, it definitely has a little vibe to it, a little bounce to it. I'm interested in seeing where they go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I'm gonna do, cause I know you're gonna like this one. But yeah. This is definitely sounds like. Some LA music. Like, I could totally hear Dom. I could totally hear Nip. I could totally hear Larry on it. Like, oh, yeah. Well, maybe not Larry. I mean, but Larry just, got a special pocket, but I know what you're saying. That vo- that tone yeah. of voice. Yeah. I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could feel that. I could for sure feel that one right there. Here we go. But what are we talking about forward? Um. <sighs> mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm excited to hear what it sounds like. Okay, 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 okay. I ain't mad at it. Track 11, kids these days. I'm talking about these kids these days. They be tripping, baby. Mm. Yeah. I don't know why when the voices came in, the first thing I thought of was Bone Thugs and Harmony. <laughs> that's funny. I don't know why, but that's funny. Anytime somebody says Bone Thugs. Also, we gotta, we gotta do East 1999 Eternal at some point. You've probably never heard the album, have you? Never even heard those words put together in the same sentence. Have you heard Crossroads? Yeah. That's the album that Crossroads is from. Oh. Okay. One of my favorite records is on there. I'm with it. I uh, love me some it? Bone Thugs. Was it, was it Flush? I forget who my favorite one is. It was the, it was the chubby dude with the big lip. <laughs> pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick All right, uh, next 10. Yeah. Like it was trying to get there. Yeah, it was trying to drop. It, it wanted to drop. It was about to drop too. It was, like give it like five more seconds. It definitely would have dropped. I mean, you can give it five. It's still like I feel like blue on it right now. Uh, it's still blue. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel where he was going with it, and it definitely, um, it's funny because to be from 2015, it definitely sounds like older than that. Like it really does sound like he's trying to do some goody mob stuff with it, and which is, it's it's a dope aspiration. Yeah. But you gotta execute. True. Like you you pay homage, but you gotta like. True. You can't you can't homage with a stick figure. No facts, and it's it's different. It's hard to try to do something that a, a group did by yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and I mean by yourself. Like, yeah, not a feature. <laughs> like, yeah. Not one. Yeah. Even Goody Ma had like outcast every now and then. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? But there's also five of them. Yeah, there's also five their, of them. Um, the production team, I forget the uh, their name. I want to say Bomb Squad. It wasn't Bomb Squad, but like you should. Uh, there's a there's a there's a documentary about it. It might be on I'm Netflix. Waiting like a patient. Um, waiting a wait and they were talking about how they came up with like waterfalls. Bro. Don't go yeah. chasing. Basically, like it randomly started with the baseline, 
you know, like, bam, bam, zzz, and they're like, yo, let's go with that. It's like, yo, how did you? But just amazing. They're dope. It's also weird that they, like, still be in the studio. Not not weird, but, like, there's how they're so prolific at a time, and then still are in the studio all the time making music, but no one cares about it. Mm-hmm. That's that's just interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Did I um? Yeah, you put blue on that. I thing. blued it. Blued uh, it. I ain't even mad at it. Corner stories two. Corner stories two. Track twelve. It sounds like a straight Larry June record. This definitely sounds like June about to kill this shit. Good job, Larry. <laughs> Suck it to him. Off the dribble. I'm about to start saying off the dribble. I heard Nip say it. I got to say off the dribble now. I, yeah. He was like, man, I've been doing this shit since the dribble. I was like, what? I thought that was just June. He, June probably got it from Nip. Might be some L.A. slang. Definitely some L.A. slang. But if I go to L.A., I'm going to know all the slang for no reason. I'm going to just fit right in. Don't get shot. I'm not going to go to the hood. I'm going to be saying that shit on uh, Melrose. <laughs> Run all the white folks. They be like, oh, you're so cultured. You're stupid. Call the police. <laughs> go ahead, but uh, hey. It definitely sounds like a Larry June record. Yeah. I'm sorry, Larry. That's not a good thing. <laughs> I'm just going to just... white it. <laughs> Some Sometimes talent can come through the composition and the mix. This is not one of those times. Or rather, rather, rather transcend the composition and the mix. I, I don't, I don't think this is one of those times that the talent just, just over, True. overrides. Not for you. But in his defense... Well, it's not really his defense because it's kind of his fault. We are reaching the end of a 17 song album. Yeah. So. Definitely pass halfway. Oh, wait. A lot. He do got two features. Oh, I guess, Isaiah yeah. Rashad and Angel May. Oh, no, Isaiah Rashad, uh, one of the albums he did was like dope. Uh, print, ain't Something's Tirade? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's on it. Something's Tirade. Something's Tirade was definitely hard. Wasn't Kendrick on that? A few people were on that. Kendrick was on it. Oh, the junk he had with Kendrick. Um. Uh, it was like free lunch. That's what they moved on. That was like the best one. Because Kendrick just got the body in it for no reason. <laughs> for no reason. It just might, came might in. Might listen to that when he's in the car. And the funny thing is, like, Isaiah Rashad, when he raps, like, he can rap. But, like, he kind of, like he has his own style where he just, like, kind of, like, hey, oh, yeah. hey. So Kendrick comes in, like, how many meals did you walk? <laughs> he just uh-huh. like that. How many styles did you talk today? And I'm like, he's nigga asking you about your personal life. And I'm like, Kendrick, I thought he was dancing. No, no dance, just oh, bars, sit down and talk stories, to knowledge. Drink this chamomile tea. Let's talk. Chamomile, I'm going to sleep. Yeah, boy. All right, let's get the let's get this track out like a light, like Drake said. Track thirteen, the bad guys. We hate the bad guys. It's definitely reverse some shit. Yeah, it reminds me of like House of Balloons, like some original, uh, original weekend. <laughs> it sounds like circles. It does sound a little bit like circles. Kind of has that 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 energy, that vibe of like yeah. Reminiscence. I just realized, I just remember that I'm going ice skating tomorrow. Oh, it's fire. I mean, oh, yeah. Okay. Still fun. No, definitely. It seems I gotta get some some rest. And then you gotta get some thick socks too. Oh, I'm help. Got my good NBAs. Got my, my knee high NBA yeah. joints with the with the cushion foot. Nah, double that thing up. Well, nah, you know what you're doing. That's a lot of cushion on there. Yeah, NBA NBA toes is uh, but. Oh yeah. Um, but what you feeling? What you feeling, chat 13? I ain't mad at that. That's how I felt when I heard this. I ain't even mad at that. Track 14, Sheba with Angel May. Featuring Angel May. You could have just... Yeah, a little redundant. <laughs> or unless it's supposed to be Swam.
he was a fan of the acoustic guitar. He is, and I feel like we're getting into a whole different sound, which is, might be why. I mean, I don't, I don't know what his career is like, but I, I can see why that would be problematic. Yeah, this is the last project he dropped. Well, he dropped this. This was kind of trash to me, but we can talk about that later. But uh, you feel me? Yeah, that's like Mookie Jones. I'm not really. Is that the 20? Yeah, that's 10. Go ahead. Yeah, to the next 10. I kind of feel like I know where I'm going with this already, though. I told you he sings, but he don't do the auto time. He do so, like the, uh, yeah, so uh, this is, this is, this probably could be a pretty strong song, but I think he still needs that, like, he needs that Dilla kick on this too. But the thing is, why high volume output is important is because this is like the sixth or seventh time he's in the exact same thing. Like, <laughs> so you pick the best one of those I feel, I feel and run with it. Because even like, I, um, I used to work with this dude named uh, Rob, and he was like, yo, I can't write. I keep writing the same thing. Like, bro, that's because whatever that feeling is, you haven't gotten that out yet. So you got to get that out, and then and then you'll be able to download some new information and like create a new song. But like, as long as you as long as you keep stopping yourself up by not writing how you feel, it's just gonna you're gonna keep writing the same thing. So you got to like make those just keep making those songs, and one of two things is gonna happen: either you find something else after you get that sentiment out. Or that just becomes what you rap about. It's one or the other. But like, if that becomes what you rap about, then you're just gonna get better about that topic. Or you take the experience of crafting songs and then get to apply that to. Uh... Oh oh oh! Hey! Oh, I did it for you. Is it? Maybe it's sound. Yeah. Um, gangster. It's. Yeah. That's fire. I need that at the crib. <laughs> Except like in reverse though. Like, you feel me? Like Clap on, clap off. No, 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 no. Set the light tone to the mood of the music I'm playing. That's some sophisticated AI stuff. It'll be ready by the time I'm ready to get a crib that, of that you're sophistication. Gonna have to like, you're going to have to, like... I mean, Tidal kind of does that with the My Mixes. You can kind of tell what it's supposed to be based on the color, I think. Either that or just random colors, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get some light. Or make the lights or change you, or you like colors to... The, I mean, I would have to. I mean, yeah. The way I'm thinking, I would just have to make a playlist. You get like a, yeah, like, an app that works with the music, and then just like when you like a song, you get to choose a palette for it. So like, you I know, feel you. you know, like oh yeah, I just want, I'm, I want the purple palette right now, and you just get all the songs you put in purple. I can't wait until there's until there's artists. They, they need to like, do that plug in on uh on one of these services. I'm telling you, in a few years, they're gonna have this thing where artists are gonna be working with the tech companies, and it's like yo, so we have this thing set up with like in house speakers where we install the surround sound somebody's house if it plays your song you the artist can pick whatever color light you want while your song is playing and it's gonna they're gonna be advertising like that when people buy a house like yo you get this album you get this sound system like the lights change yeah as you listen to the album just push you in that mood push you in the vibe that i was in when i was making the song man like get with it i feel like that's gonna be coming soon that could be cool that definitely could be cool. It'll, it take, It's very intricate, and it probably will take a few years of trial. Well, not a few years. It'll probably take a couple months. Like, it doesn't seem that hard. I feel like the hardest part, like, would just be calibrating, like... Getting enough artists to buy in for it to be relevant. Yeah. One, getting artists to buy in. Which, I think, if you go to, like, some super, ex like, eccentric artists, like, some, like... If you go to the Daniel Caesars LEDs. and the... Her hers and the Caliuchuses of the world and the Steve Lacy's of the world like the mad artistic folk yeah. the Ari Lennoxes the Summer Walkers they be with it they for sure will be with it what I can just play this song and the lights going to sign me up <laughs> you think so that's going to be Ari cut the check yeah oh they ain't, they ain't see that's the sad part because they ain't even going to be worried about the check that's just going to sound dope that shit just gonna Maybe. sound. That's, I mean, it does sound dope. No, I'm yeah, but they gonna cut the check. Man, like, I mean, they have to cut the check. You going to like? They they have to cut the check. Oh, I forgot what it sounded like. Did I even give it a chip yet? Yeah. Nah. Oh yeah, that's all I was saying. He is he too many. Like, this is one of the better ones of that motif, but like. Yeah, you can't have a whole album where all the songs start the same. Like, it don't. I feel it. Nice but I like this one. But I feel like I can't give it. A, I can't. I can't. Let's give it a blue. It's like I like it, but um, 
I feel like um, I'm tired of the sound pushing the finish line forward for you. I feel that. Yeah, listen, um, to an extent, or in a, for a lack of better words. Track 15, Sunday morning. It's a minute for 32. Let's see what we're talking about. Talk, talk about it, Pastor. Talk about it. You sure it's not T.D. Jakes? It might be T.D. Jakes. Bishop. Never seen him in person. But I need to see. I just want to see him in person. Who, T.D. Jakes? Yeah. That's a big boy. That's, that's, that's a big boy. I want to hear him talk, too, because he's he talking about some real stuff. Yeah. But, uh... You can run the next time. I'm trying. Run the next time. you talking about, boy. Church of the world. <laughs> Touch your neighbor. I, I don't. I, I, I'd be kind of blown when the pastor do that what? at church. Touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. And ask him. Like, <laughs> Shoot, I'd be send me next to a cute girl every Sunday. We gonna have. I'm gonna have lots of friends. Just yeah, cause. <laughs> I like to converse. Uh, yeah. I, no. I. I'd be making friends in church, but the problem is like when I make too good of friends and it's like I'm not really trying to make friends like we talking because we sitting here next to church and what at the end mean? of church they like trying to talk talk and like stay after and talk in church and I'll be like I, mean, I just need to be a better Christian it's, at the end of the day that's what it boils down to I need to be more open to talking to people I just don't be trying to talk to nobody <laughs> I guess well, I, don't, I don't know what I wanted to talk to people has to do with being a Christian but I think uh, Christians trying to talk to me about like just being nice, just like, hey, that was a good service, right? And I'm just like, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's, but that's not. I mean, it's not. I mean, bad. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a church goer, so I'm gonna just. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna keep my. It's not to like it's a sin, but it's like you can talk. For I understand what you're saying, but like I said, I'm just. I, I feel you. Yeah. So if that, if you want to work on that, by all means, yeah, do I, so. I, I'm trying to work on that in general, like being open to talking to people, because you never know. Well, I mean, not being open and just talk to anybody, but, like, just being open to, like, if somebody wants to talk to you. I feel like you are. I feel like I am. Or at least, you know, in the, at least in the, within the context that I know you. But then again, like, when we did the shoot, I don't think you talked to anybody for two days. For real, for real. No, I didn't. Because I was, I was in my world. Yeah, I saw. I was dancing. But and people come up and be like, yeah, you're always dancing and stuff. And I'd be like, yeah. Then I just walk away and keep dancing. Because it's like... You messing up my vibe, sucker. It don't even be you messing up my vibe. It just be like, I don't know how... Like, people people talk weird to me. Like, th- that that was just, That's like a weird... To me, that's a weird way to approach somebody. You're yeah. always dancing. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's an icebreaker. I mean, yeah. But, like, it's a weird icebreaker to me. Just say, hey... <laughs> Let's start off with hey. I feel like it's a little more awkward, but I feel like it's, it's like hey, hi. I was like hey, oh hey, what's up? And it's like hey, why are you always dancing? Like ask me like uh, hey. I mean I hey, guess also you just like, want to be greedy. I don't, not even greedy, like no greeted. Oh yeah, like igno- Like I hate because it's, it's trauma. I need to talk to a therapist. It's all trauma. Because mm-hmm. when I used to be a child, niggas used to run up to you, and that's how the insult started. You ugly. I just walked in. Like I just walked in the door. <laughs> oh, oh goodness, that's, oh, he's a, that's walking by and it's hilarious. Calling. It's like like him. Look at his shoes. Them shit's trash. It's like, what do you mean, y'all conversation? Well, I'll tell I mean, you one thing. A I mean, a problem man. well defined is half salt. <clears throat> so, okay. if you like you need to go, go. I feel like everyone should probably go. Nah, for sure. I just got. I gotta put that, and it sucks because I. I gotta. Well, it doesn't suck. I'm gonna try to. I need. I'm gonna try to get out there. I gotta put in my schedule. But, all right. How you feeling about Sunday morning? <sighs> nice little. Uh, nice little church. I, I mean, I can give it a blue, I guess. Uh, yeah, it wasn't really too much craziness going on. But then we got track 16, Sunday service featuring Isaiah Rashad. Isaiah Rashad. (laughs) 
Swerving on that screwdriver is dangerous. Maybe part of what's throwing me is that it sounds super dated, despite it being... How old is this? Five years old? Five. Yeah. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Next thing. Mm. Shout out to God. <clears throat> but uh, how you feeling? Out off that start. He hit us with a hit niggas with a little bar. Oh, I didn't realize Sunday morning is probably like an interlude, isn't it? Yeah. Hit niggas with a bar. Damn, we got a I'm tired of niggas doing shit on purpose, but doing it without a purpose. That's what, hey. Make you sit back and think about your steps. Think about your moves, your motives, your groups. Like, I want to give it a green, but I feel like the last one should have been white because I didn't realize it was the other one. Mm -hmm. What? Oh. <clears throat> Do what you I want in this world. Do what you want in this world, man. Yeah, yeah. And where we are, final track, track 17, Living Sacrifice. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like ultimate Isaiah Rashad. It sounds like it should not even have been on the album, but he made it last minute. It was like, yo, this is fire. I'm going to put it on the album. <laughs> Nothing about that sounds anything like any of the first 16 tracks. Uh, yeah. yeah? Not yeah. When you mention it like that. Like, this is this is, that should just be red because it don't fit. That's probably, like, first 10 wise, it's far and away the best track. Not even close. Not like not, not remotely close. First ten. Based on that first ten, it's mm -hmm. like yeah. Go ahead. Play this it. is the best track. Yeah. Based. Oh wow. It sound like he used the same drum loop from a. Uh, the thing is though. Highs and lows. I feel like. He's also not gonna come in with the bass like he should, cause if, the first time sound like an Erica Badu record to me. It did. Um, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. yeah, he needs to come in with a bass, mm -hmm. but like I don't. Mm -hmm. That feels completely different than any other record. It does. Like if it feels ma more mature. Like, there's that, but it also has like a, a fuller and more happy sound. All the other ones are more like they're super mellow, like. A more chill out but that's like it's it's not super intense mm. it's not intense but like when it switches up it kind of adds it has a much energy. greater presence even and even without the drums it has just a much greater a greater presence and, and, and a more a more happy feel to it more sunshiny feel to it than any of the other ones the other ones are like more subdued and like you know i don't know just way more subdued yeah the other ones it felt like you listen to those at night like living sacrifice sounds like you're listening to it like driving during the day yeah i'll buy that like at night it sounds like some except some of them sound like you listen to them like during the day like outside like uh holy water that maybe not outside but that sounds like some shit you listen to like when you in like the sun room just chilling right looking at the sun but a lot of them they Wasn't sound that the like one? that was the, that was the the, the block party joint, right holy water holy yeah that was the one that you say it sound like you play a genre the block party but i feel like oh we gotta do mick jenkins we gotta do a mick jenkins but um, <clears throat> did I, I give him one? Nope. We well, did not. I feel like a lot of this, yeah, a lot of these songs is just like, yeah, like you said, like it's played. Yeah, it did. in the I crib. Gave it green. Like it sounds like you play these in the crib with each other. <laughs> like, cause I feel like there's a difference between music you play in the crib and the music that you play outside. Like. I think that's the thing. I think there's songs that are like for being in the house, and then there are songs that are meant to be played like when you're outside moving around. That's a good point. That's and good I think point. there are songs that are meant to be played when you're in the house moving around, and I think there are songs that are made to be played when you're sitting down still outside. Because I definitely play different music when I'm like cleaning up versus when I'm like just working or just chilling, driving to work. Yeah, this is a different vibe. What is it's chilling? Different. What is chilling? What is ch I don't know how to chill. I don't know how to chill either. I'm always doing something. Not food. Actually, that's a lie. All I know how to do is chill. <clears throat> that's a lie. That's even a bigger lie. <laughs> I just know how to do things. Things in general. But uh, I don't. Ch I don't chill till my body says no mas. 
My mind is like, go to sleep right now on the couch. Like, damn it. <laughs> um, that real, bro. That real. That real right there. But what you feeling? Because I don't. Did you put a chip on for mm-hmm. last year? Oh, you put Gabe Green. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yay, yay. But there you have it, folks. There you, definitely, you definitely dodged the white chip. So happy. Track one at the bottom. Track one at the bottom. Track seventeen at the top. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Seven greens. Yep. Seven greens. So this is one of those like blatantly like could have just did Filler. seven. <laughs> Could have just did seven. Seventeen is like a that's an excessive number of tracks too. It's a lot. You don't need all that. You really don't. Seventeen uh, is an excessive. Unless you already have a name, no one cares that much. Yeah, that is true. And like it's not even novel anymore. It was like yeah, I'm gonna fill up a CD. So unless you're gonna drop an hour's worth of music, hey, sorry, not an hour. Sorry, that's not even anything. Like 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 three hours, four hours of worth of music, and it's just hella song, there's no point in putting that much record, that many records together in one project. Like, you know, it'd be like, Drake, oh, it's a playlist. It's a four-hour playlist of all your old music. And then you got, but then but then you got to tell a story, not not just in the songs, but there has to be a meta story through the songs. Like, you know, you take them here, start right here, you know, it might go down here and come up, which is really what you should do on an album anyway. Mm-hmm. But like, if you're not going for four hours, keep it short. That's, that's, that's how I feel about it. And there you have it, folks. If you ain't going for four hours, cut that shit out. That's what she said. Cut that shit out. Not that part. If she wants to go for four hours, take her to the doctors. Because she has something off. Because four hours is too long to do anything. Anything. Besides roast a lamb. A slow Good cook. Night. A <laughs> Only thing that should take more than four hours is slow cooking a turkey. <laughs>